What's up everyone? So today we're going to be taking a look at undervolting and overclocking a laptop CPU. So first we're going to go ahead and run a Cinebench and use throttle stop to check the stock voltage of the CPU. Okay, so as you can see, the stock voltage is around 1.28, 1.29-ish. And the temperatures are slowly rising. It's running at 4.7 still, and it looks like it throttled at the end a little bit. So we got 1937. Now we're going to go ahead and undervolt. As you can see, we're hitting the thermal limit. So you're going to hit FIVR on throttle stop. And we're going to go ahead and click and unlock adjustable voltage for CPU core. And I'm going to bring this to minus 100 millivolts. And you also have to do this for CPU cache. So do the exact same thing, minus 100 millivolts. You have to make sure the values are matched perfectly. Okay, so looking good here. We're going to click apply. And it looks like the offsets were applied. So now we're going to go back to Cinebench and we're going to run the benchmark again. And let's see how the temperature is at this time as well. Okay, so the voltage is much lower now 1.17 to 1 1.20 volts. Temperatures are also much better. And I don't know if we noticed this earlier, but package power is also less by a good amount. So this is looking way better than before. And our score also has gone up. So this is good. And this is basically how you're going to undervolt in throttle stop. So now we're going to go ahead and turn off the undervolt. Okay. And let's switch over to XTU. Now, depending on which program you like, you can use either one. Most of the time, both programs should work fine for your CPU. Now, this is the XTU interface. And I accidentally closed in a bench, so let me reopen it. Okay. So as you can see, this is the interface, and this is the core voltage offset that we were changing in throttle stop. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down to about the same as before. Okay. Oops. All right. So first, we need the voltage. Now on mine, it's already here, but you're going to want to click the little wrench and click core voltage to show the voltage. I forgot to mention that. So let's run a stock bench first. As you can see, 1.282 volts. It's rising. Temperatures are rising. It's probably going to thermal throttle. Package power is 182 watts. It's going up still. Looks like we're about to thermal throttle, and there we go. Thermal throttled, okay. 1977. Okay. So, let's undervolt. Okay, that's the same voltage as before. And one thing to note, as you can see, the voltage went down. So let's run the... Okay, so let's run the benchmark. Um, one thing to note, the cache undervolt is automatically matched in XTU, so you don't have to worry about moving two sliders. The single slider will work on both, so cache and core are actually undervolted. Now as you can see, we're getting much better temperatures than before. The voltage is less than before, and the score is one point higher. The scores won't really matter here because I'm recording this video right now, so my scores are going to be a bit low. Okay. So that's basically how to undervolt. You're going to want to 
fine tune the CPU yourself to see where it's stable. For me, minus 100 is perfect for my CPU to run at stock clocks. You're going to want to experiment with that. So now let's take a look at overclocking. I'm going to go back, click this overclock button here and throttle stop. Let's hit 5 gigahertz on all cores. And I'm going to lower the voltage just a little bit because it's probably going to thermal throttle pretty badly. So let's try minus 40. And don't forget to change it on cache as well for throttle stop. Okay, looking good. So now we're going to click apply and offset should change here. Okay, so now let's run Cinebench with our 5.0 overclock and see what happens. Okay, so it's running at 5 gigahertz and it's climbing and pretty sure it's thermal throttling now. Yep, there we go, it's thermal throttling. This clocks are going down to 4.8, so we're still at 4.8 going to go down to 4.7 and there we go 2045 this is actually the score i normally get at stock so thermal throttling okay 100 degrees okay so we're going to go ahead and clear this and we're going to change the overclock let's do 4.9 on all cores and i'm also going to lower the undervolt a bit more maybe 65 yeah, let's do 65. Let's see what happens. Okay. Let's see what happens now. Okay, everything's cleared. So let's try one more time. Okay. So we're hitting 4.9 on all cores, which is good. And the temperatures are still quite high. But no throttling just yet. Oh. There we go. We're going to start throttling now. 100 degrees. Yep. Okay. So it throttled a bit. 2018. Okay. Thermal throttling. VR limit. Okay. So let's switch to XTU. I'm going to turn off all this stuff I just did here. Turn off the overclock. Okay, so now we're going to get rid of this and go to XTU and do the same thing. For XTU, I'm going to do a 4.8 gigahertz overclock, I think. Right now, I need to repaste my CPU, so it's running a bit too hot right now. Okay, so looks like the settings from throttle stop are still in effect, so let's bring this down to 4.8. And I'm going to increase the undervolts even more since I'm less. So let's do it right here. Click apply. Okay. So now, okay. So now we're going to go here and run Cinebench again to see if it's thermal throttles. Okay. So I don't know if, there we go. Okay. So 4.8 gigahertz. And temperatures are still rising, but they're better than before. Not by too much, though. It might not thermal thaw this time. Okay, there we go. 2016. So it didn't thermal thaw this time. Okay, so that's basically a little quick tutorial on how to do it. You're definitely going to want to fine tune your system to your needs and make sure you take care of thermals. I'll be repacing my laptop soon. Alright, so thanks for watching. See you in the next one.